So thanks, Patrice, for the introduction. Yeah, uh, I'm a postdoc inside the nanophotonics theory group led by Javier Garcia de Bajo at TICFO, not so far from here. And today I will talk about uh, cavity-free lasers through graphene-based random metamaterials. So in the beginning, I will bother you with some basics. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> so as you all know well, Traditional lasers are composed of three basic constitutive elements. An amplifying medium, a pumping setup, and an optical cavity that confines and shapes the emitted light in well-determined modes and directions. However, modern approaches are extending this traditional laser paradigm into novel avenues. For example, the fast-developing fiber laser technology replaces uh, the optical cavity with optical fibers, thus enabling very large average optical powers and very high beam qualities. In the context of nanophotonics, spacers enable the simulated emission of surface plasmons confined at metallic nanoparticles, and, through, and, and then they enable the simulated emission of very localized fields, thanks to the inherent sub-wavelength nature of plasmons. And this can be used for a plethora of applications. And the propagating counterpart of uh, localized surface plasmons is represented by surface plasmon polaritons, which, as you all know well, hold great promise for uh, integrated circuits uh, based on optical, uh, on photons rather than uh, on electrons as information carrier. Uh, but surface plasmons are very lossy, so in this context, um, amplification schemes are used to compensate for surface plasma polariton losses while retaining the subwavelength feature. Um, over a completely different direction, um, so-called random lasers replace the optical cavity uh, by multiple scattering in the southern media, and they enable cavity-free simulated emission of radiation. Um, so since the system is random, the output beam of such lasers heavily depends on the uh, disorder properties of the system. So when uh, the scattering is very high, um, so, sorry, when the scattering is very low, extended modes dominate in the output, while when scattering is high, localized spots appear. So in general, the dynamics and the output beam is highly multimode, and this is due to the coexistence of extended modes with localized modes, answering from weak Anderson localization. So in general, uh, random lasers offer great potential for cost-effective lasers working without a cavity, but they inherently lack of tunability, reproducibility, and control over the output beam. So our idea is to exploit nonlinear self-organizations by means of metamaterials, to manipulate the output beam of a random laser. So what do we mean by that? So if you consider a standard uh, Gaussian beam, as you know well, it can be focused down up to its waist and then naturally diffracts. Diffraction is the source of extended modes because um, they cannot be focused down if the disorder is not high. Uh, conversely, uh, in care media, for example, there exists well-known class of uh, beams called spatial stomatons, which are self-organized wave, um, wave packets that can uh, propagate without diffracting. So nonlinearity acts like a lens that can compensate for diffraction, and um, they can be excited in such a kind of system. So this idea in the context of lasers is not completely new, as Patrice knows well, in the context of um, semiconductor lasers, self-organization has been studied a lot, uh, but um, in the context of random laser, this kind of, um, this kind of uh, dynamics has uh, not been observed before. So to, to go, go into the laser in particular, there are few remarks to make. So a standard system like glass, it's a Hamiltonian system where energy is conserved. So solitons arise 
through the balance of nonlinearity versus diffraction in the case of spatial solitons, or nonlinearity versus dispersion, for example, in solitons propagating, in temporal solitons propagating inside uh, optical fibers. So, in general, uh, there exists a family of soliton solutions. For every intensity of the soliton, there exists a particular shape and width that can propagate without diffracting. But the laser is not a Hamiltonian system, energy is not conserved, so for solitons to appear in such kind of systems, the balance has to be um, double. Nonlinearity versus diffraction, but also gain versus loss. And gain and loss typically are nonlinear as well in lasers. So this family of solution shrinks to a fixed soliton point, which depends on the physical parameter of the system. So although these concepts might look completely abstract and unpractical, this is not true, because uh, dissipative solitons are at the core of mode locking in fiber lasers. And from this research field, it is well known that there exists a stability requirement for their existence, which is the embedding of such a blood absorber. So I slowly come to our setup. We use graphene mainly because graphene is an ideal saturable absorber for several reasons. It has a large modulation depth, it has a very low uh, saturation intensity, and it enables broadband operation thanks to its always rec resonant band structure. So saturable absorption in, um, in graphene can happen through two processes. One is intraband absorption due to the collisions of electrons in the upper band if graphene is doped. But this kind of process, this kind of absorption saturates at very high field intensities, we found, at the order of gigawatt per centimeter squared. So the major source of saturable absor uh, absorption is actually the intraband saturation, where photo-excited uh, electrons from the valence band to the upper band um, are excited in an out-of-equilibrium distribution, depicted here. And due to the presence of photo-excited electrons in the upper band, absorption gets um, saturated through partial poly blocking. I will not bother you with the theoretical details of this. If you're interested, please ask me at the end of the talk. In practice, we solved the uh, uh, Dirac equation for massless Dirac fermions in this system in a non-perturbative manner and managing to achieve um, semi-analytical expressions for the absorption coefficient. And as you can see, the absorption coefficient in graphene is uh, plotted here. Its modulation depth heavily depends on the Fermi level. So when the Fermi level becomes higher than certain threshold, uh, 0 0.4 uh, EV in this case, uh, the modulation depth just vanishes. And the saturation intensity does not depend much on the Fermi level, and it's very low. This, this plot has, is done at 1550 nanometers, and the saturation intensity, as you can see, is of the order of 100 megawatt per centimeter squared. But at optical frequencies, such a saturation intensity becomes of the order of few megawatts per centimeter squared, which is very low compared to other materials. So uh, describing the setup, uh, the idea is to bring the mathematical concept in the research field of random lasers. So conversely to metamater standard metamaterials, which, as you know well, are assembled as order structure that can engineer the uh, optical properties, here we consider a random structure. It's, it's a random laser. So the idea is to put together ingredients coming from the lasing properties of the host medium, rhodamine 6G, in our calculations, and the saturable absorption of graphene. Okay, so in this case, size and shape of the embedding constitutive elements does not play any role. While traditional random lasers are composed of macroscopic semiconductor nanoparticles with sizes and separations uh, comparable to the optical wavelengths in order to maximize scattering. So in, in our case, scattering is quenched due to the quasi-static quasi regime of the uh, elements uh, of the system. So we developed a clausius mossotti effective uh, theory for the system, driving an effective um, electric constant accounting for both the gain 
properties of rhodamine 6G and the satural absorption properties of graphene, which thus provide a collective nonlinear response of the system. And then we derive the Ginzburg-Landau-like equation accounting for optical propagation in the system, deriving it from straight away from Maxwell's equation. And we consider such systems. So we have a black box, which is our random laser, uh, pumped by uh, a beam at 532 nanometers, the absorption peak of rhodamine, and seeded by a seed beam at the emission peak of rhodamine. Uh, I emphasize here that the seed beam, we just require it for calculations, while in practical uh, setup, the laser will emit by itself without the need of a seed. So we first consider the extended modes of the system, and we found several uh, families. So depending on the linear gain of the system, for overcritical conditions after a certain threshold, there exists only one family of extended modes, while in this subcritical region, as you can see, there, extend, there exists a bistability of two kinds of extended modes. So bistability is already a strong signature of soliton existence. So we studied the stability of extended modes, and we observed that for subcritical conditions, extended modes, when perturbed over propagation, they tend to filament into filaments that look uh, stable, while for overcritical conditions, we observe uh, chaotic-like dynamics. So then we went to calculate directly the solitons of uh, soliton modes, localized modes of the system, and we found three kinds of dissipated solitons, similar to the extended modes, which are all bell-shaped, uh, with size and shape fixed by the conditions of the system, which are tunable. So the size and shapes of such localized modes uh, depends on the pumping optical power, of course, and on the density of graphene flakes, but not on their particular geometry and size. And um, the phase of such beam is not a standard constant like in uh, any beam, but as you can see, uh, it's different for any uh, for every of, th of this mode. So this implies that there is a power flow inside the beam, which is different for any of them. And yeah, as you can see, the width uh, can be tuned from a uh, few microns to uh, 100 microns, and uh, their intensity is of the order of a gigawatt per centimeter squared. So we studied eventually the stability of such, uh, of such solitons, localized modes of this system, and we found that only one of them is stable. So this means that extended modes in this system are unstable. The two solitons modes in this system are unstable. There exists only one mode which can be manipulated through the density of the graphene flakes, and this we think it's an enormous advantage in the context of London laser because it enables to manipulate the output beam uh, in, an, in an efficient way, which at the moment is not possible in this context. As I said also before, the width can be tuned depending on the density of graphene flakes from few microns up to uh, one millimeter. And uh, such um, localized modes, they exist only in the subcritical regime, where, as you can see, they are stable while for other critical conditions, chaos, chaotic dynamic also starts coming into play. So I will conclude with that, and thanks for your attention. Yeah. Thank you, Andrea, for the presentation. So uh, is there any question in the audience? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. The nice talk. So your case is the graphene is exploited as a saturable absorber, so lossy material, and the rhodamine six G is the game medium in your simulation, right? Right. Yes. Okay. So for this case, the saturable absorbers uh, comes from the graphene. Yes. Uh, will be uh, depending on the graphene properties, like uh, what about the linear dispersion or the parabolic, and it depends on the flakes or the disorder of the graphene. Qualities. So, how to maintain the graphene property? Properties. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and your uh, flight conditions. 
Um, yeah, this is a very good question. So um, the system we focused on, it's this kind of system. So the density of graphene flakes is the only parameter that matters. I, as I said, the size uh, and um, separation between them doesn't matter much as long as you are in a regime where the system became as a homogeneous medium. But from your question, I, I, I understand that you are considering graphene flakes of few nanometers in... No, we consider graphene flakes of 30 nanometers or so. Of course, if you consider very small graphene flakes below 10 nanometers size, then the structural properties of graphene change and the setable absorption properties as well. But for large flakes above, with diameter above 20 nanometers, the optical properties are identical to the ones of extended graphene. So it shouldn't play a role in this context. Any other question? We still have time for, let's say, one more question if uh, someone... No? Yes, please. Okay, so continue my uh, question. Uh, yeah, uh, I can be convincible if you think about uh, uh, laser frequency in the IR, infrared, so the visible light. Yes. Uh, and if you think about the terahertz ah. range or the millimeter wave range, sure. this oral very long range disorder in the dilute absorptions uh, reflecting on the very, you know, the strong differences of sure. that. So this is the, f the yes. very high frequencies, the infrared and the visible lights. Sure, yes, this is completely true. For terahertz frequencies, of course, such small frequencies, small band gaps appearing in the system will influence the absorption properties. But at optical, and I mean, I've made, uh, I compared these classical-like simulations with ab initio atomistic-like simulations done by another postdoc in our group, Joel Cox. And we've seen that uh, at infrared and optical frequencies, the two models are completely identical, so it's completely reliable, yes. Uh, 